there's so many smart people, you included as an investor, so many smart people that just didn't know, oh, I could have helped with X, Y, or Z. Yeah, like it's it's so, your instinct is to just show the good side, right? But that what actually makes people closer to you and wanna help you more is when you're vulnerable about what's going on. What's up, guys? It's Justin, your favorite founder's favorite founder. I'm back here with my friend, James Bashara. What's up, everybody? Glad to be back for another listicle, but hopefully this one's uh, just as powerful as the last one. Exactly. We're doing a listicle as video. This is like an upworthy uh, article, but in video format. And today, what are we going to do? We're going to do bad habits, habits that uh, were actually negative for during our times as startup founders. Uh, that took away from our productivity and uh, were detriment to our success. Yeah, and it's a lot of the ones we'll mention are sneaky. Sneaky bad habits you think are like good in the short term and just for me personally, just tearing me apart, destroying my productivity and me having no idea it was silently killing my productivity. All right, and so hopefully you can take some of these habits and if you're doing them, stop doing them. <laughs> is that helpful is that helpful just stop doing them you know it's like it's that easy you know all you have to do is stop um all right we'll talk about maybe at the end of the video we'll talk about some ways you can mitigate your bad habits uh but we'll just start with here are some of the bad habits that we uh, used to have back when we were founders and how they affected us all right james you want to start with one Okay, first one is bad sleep. And everyone thinks that, well, a lot of people think that they're getting good sleep. I know that I thought I was getting good sleep because the hours that I was in bed was eight hours, seven hours, nine hours. But the best, some of the best professional, personal professional advice I ever got in my life was a sleep doctor telling me to wake up every morning at the same time. Mm. And that will set your 24 hour circadian rhythm. Instead of waking up at six, then nine, then 11, then eight, my body had no idea what time it was. And eight days of waking up at the same time every morning, whatever that time makes sense for you, set my whole just rhythm. And it, it, it was so life-changing. It was more than game-changing, it was life-changing. Sadly, that was after I was in a five-year just like pit and doing definitely not my best work thinking, oh, well, I'm gonna work till 4 a.m. today to get the most out. So then I gotta sleep till noon. It was, I was all over the place with sleep. Yeah, mine was the same. I, I used to stay up super late. For me, I was like trying to escape from whatever was going wrong in the startup. So I'd watch like a whole season of Breaking Bad or like five episodes of Breaking Bad yeah. like once. And you know, I'd stay up till like three or four in the morning and then my day would be shot the next day, you know, I'd feel horrible. And so um, I think for me, it was about like not, you know, getting rid of my computer by my bed, trying to like delete apps from my phone. I didn't really do these things until after I was, you know, done being a founder, which is, you know, it's just bad, but that, that, that always affected my ability to actually work productively was, and also like have a great happy life, right? It was like being able to uh, have consistent sleep. Do you have? Do you keep phones by your bed? Uh, I do now, but on my phone, I ha I don't have social apps on it, oh, so nice. I, I don't have like Twitter, I don't have YouTube, I don't have TikTok. So on my phone, it's just like I use it for reading with Kindle, and then that's it. Yeah, none of the infinite scrolls. Yeah, there's no infinite scroll, so like for me, it's not. It doesn't affect my sleep in the same way. When I did have all the social apps on my phone or shopping apps then it would like affect my sleep, right? Like, cause I'd be like infinitely scrolling for, you know, doom scrolling for hours. Right, yeah. right. All right, what's what's next? All right, habit number two for me is diet. It was a bad habit for me. Uh, I never really connected diet to like how I was feeling. Uh, but I, at the same time at Justin TV, we'd order pizza for lunch every day and I'd have like pizza and then I take a nap in the afternoon, probably also tied into my sleep. I, in the afternoon, I just, I'd be like so tired. I was like, man, I'm just a sleepy guy. And then like <laughs> every afternoon, like after lunch, I'd take a nap. I had like a sleeping bag in the corner. Dude, we had a nap room. Yeah. And it was basically, I was like, I need a nap room. Yeah. And I look back and I, I, ne I don't need naps at all anymore. I'm like, what yeah. was I doing to myself? Exactly. Like you were abusing your body. You know, for me, it was like hot, fast carbs, like 
you know, high glycemic index foods. I know I'm like tired afterwards. Well, now I know, but I didn't at the time, but I'd, I'd get tired afterwards and just take a nap. And so like just having a, eating a healthier diet, you know, like a much more Mediterranean diet, something that's more vegetables and, and a little bit of protein based is, you know, I'm not tired anymore during the day. Yeah. Well, look this up, kids. Related to diet and and energy, three alcoholic drinks for males, three alcoholic drinks before bed will decrease your sleep quality by 39% on average. That's like thinking you got eight hours sleep, you got five. Yeah. It's, it is, for females, it's two alcoholic drink, drinks. Um, for males, if you have two alcoholic drinks before bed, it'll decrease your sleep quality by 23%. So that I would go out and drink with friends, go get drinks with colleagues and have no idea that I was sluggish the next day. Similarly, just had no idea what was happening in my body. I just looked around and thought, well, other people are doing this and they're going to work, so they must be fine too. We were probably all struggling to get through the day after yeah. these these choices where I just had no idea the effect it was having on my body. Yeah, drinking was a huge one. You know, Drinking was something I was doing probably four to six days a week. And, you know, it was like a latent, like during the mornings, I, would all, I remember it would always take like some time to like get back to normal, right? Mm -hmm. Like in the morning, I'd feel like sluggish, be hungover, need coffee. And then like after, you know, by 11 or 12, then I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good again. Mm -hmm. But like, I'd be feeling horrible. You know, that's like a significant chunk of your day that's just blown away <laughs> right. by drinking. Especially if you also have a nap in the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, when are we going to fit work in? I had like, right. that's why like we were always working at like, you know, my most productive hours would be like between like 5 and 8 p.m. or whatever, because right. that's like when I finally reset everything. I have my nap. I'm like ready to go. Boom. I got like a couple hours of programming. Dude, we'd stay in the office till 10 p.m. We're like, we think we work so yeah. hard. And yeah, when I look back, I was it was probably five hours of productive, four or five hours max of yeah. productive work each day. Yeah. Another bad habit that I had was uh, I used to blame myself for everything going wrong in the company. You know, so everything that was was going wrong, I'd be like, oh, it's my fault. If I was a better founder, I'd be, you know, this wouldn't be happening. Or um, I'd have uh, thought about this or be able to fix this. And, you know, it's just like, let alone like it's not true. It's just like not a productive attitude, right? Because when you feel like that, you're in this like kind of negative spiral. Um, you know, it's, it's really hard to snap out into the like, okay, move forward to the you know, blame is not productive. It's like, what are we going to do from here, this situation to like get, move forward, right? That's mm -hmm. the, the attitude you need to have. And I think that was something that I had a really hard time, like snapping myself into that mindset because I was always stuck in the, I'm blaming myself for what's happening mindset. That's, that's a really interesting one. I think similarly in the bad habits that you would, that you, like you would think that, and it probably had served you really well in life. Yeah. Didn't achieve what you wanted you took on the ownership and you said, okay, now I'm gonna put even more effort into it. But with a team dynamic or when a journey, when a journey is five years long, it's probably not very helpful. Similarly, um, a bad habit that I, would, that I would do month after month, quarter after quarter was I would set these crazy expectations and these crazy goals. And in the first six months, eight months, it probably didn't matter that much and it was probably really inspiring um, and it's certainly, you know, if you're getting coffee with a recruit or you're, in, you know, trying to raise money from an investor, it feels great in that yeah. coffee. They, they love massive expect, you know, promise the world, but then you got to deliver the world. You have to deliver on your promises. And after 12 months, 18 months of the, of feeling like we were 20 miles behind the eight ball every day that I was waking up, it was so draining. And I realized, man, I'm. I'm doing these things in the short term, that coffee conversation with the engineering recruit we wanna join the company or the investor we wanna convince we're building something really special. I'm basically like, I'm getting 10 cents and I'm paying a dollar. I'm getting some good out of this exchange that's gonna last an hour. And then for the next four weeks, I'm gonna be thinking about, well, I told him we would hit this. Now I need to give the update. And I was just waking up every morning feeling like we are so far behind. And I never, my body confidence, my, my psychology never felt like we got, we were ahead a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it goes. How do you manage expectations? How do you learn to properly manage expectations? 
Well, in terms of managing, you mean managing expectations externally, mm -hmm. not internally. Yeah, Sorry, that's like a little different. So managing expectations externally, that was all about, um, uh, you know, to be honest, I don't think we did it really well, actually. <laughs> managing expectations externally, I don't know if we were like the best at like, like I feel like we were our own slave drivers, you know, in the sense that like our investors were kind of like hands off, mm -hmm. you know, which was good in some ways and bad in some ways. But for us, it was more like we were our own, like the founders were like the ones who were like, we're not doing good enough. We need to like improve, like, you know, and we were kind of creating that situation for ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't think we actually did manage expectations externally like that, that well, <laughs> but that, that wasn't like the biggest problem. It was probably, you know, it was more like managing our own expectations. All right, guys, quick commercial break. Today, my video is brought to you by Magic Mind. Magic Mind is a energy shot that you take in the morning alongside or in replacement of your morning coffee, and it gives you consistent, clean energy throughout the day. If you're an entrepreneur or creative in need of uh, that mental boost, then Magic Mind's for you. It's something I take every day. In fact, I love it so much that I invested in the company. Uh, my friend James started this company a couple of years ago to solve his own problem, and he's really built a product that I think is amazing. If you want to try Magic Mind out, you can get 20% off with my discount code Justin20 at magicmind.co. I really like Magic Mind because it gives me great energy throughout the day. It's filled with adaptogens and nootropics that help you focus and make you relax and uh, taste great. Once again, if you want to try it out, go to magicmind.co and enter the code Justin20. I'll link it in the description below. Thanks. How, and this is just my own pure curiosity. Yeah. How to, as an investor, what are characteristics of teams where you've been super impressed with how they manage communication expectations? And I think I think line? communicating over you know over communicating as a, to your team is like or sorry to your investors and to your team I guess to some extent is the way to go. Like. The, the people who do it best, they're like sending weekly emails with their stats. When the stats are down, they have like explanations for like, hey, here's what happened and here's what we're going to do to mitigate this. And then, you know, you see that those results show up in the next week or in the next week or whatever. And so those are the companies where I'm like the most impressed with is the people who are like over communicating. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. And then and then they get it's 10 times the the positive impression when they do start to fix those things. Yeah. And you're like, all right thick and thin they they're they were, willing to be oh, own up to it and be accountable right. to like how things are going right that's that is another bad habit i would when it was good news couldn't wait to tell everybody when it was bad news i felt like oh no i need to just fix this keep this kind of close to the you know internal to the company not to the investors that could help not to the external people, advisors, brilliant minds that I could have tapped on, but I thought, no, no, they're only going to want to help if they feel like this is winning. And that was, and then I would go months and months and months where that's not a relationship that you develop with someone. That is maybe you trying to get pats on the back, but that's not a relationship. You, you, when you could use the most is when I just thought, oh no, they wouldn't want to help. And I think that that bad habit of only positive communication when things are going well and not tapping on their shoulder when things aren't. Yep. It, there's so many smart people, you included as an investor, so many smart people that just didn't know, oh, I could have helped with X, Y, or Z. Yeah, like it's it's so, your instinct is to just show the good side, right? But that what actually makes people closer to you and want to help you more is when you're vulnerable about what's going on. So mm -hmm. like what people don't realize is if you are vulnerable and tell people here here's what's going badly in the company then they're going to be closer to you it, regardless they're going to want to help you and then when you, you you know you are will build that relationship more strongly as you you know figure your way through it right it's and the race is so long it might not even be about the idea you're working on now right but it's the relationships you build for the company two years from now that you would have never would have never entered your mind that relationship you build which yeah. we've done Yep. Um, that relationship you build ends up becoming more powerful than you you can imagine in the moment because you're open and vulnerable. And luckily, we started to correct those things and be more open, vulnerable. But early on, to your point of blaming yourself, you also just get in this one track mind of like, it's all on me, it's all on me. Yeah. And it's super unhealthy. Yep. Like that's 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 what happens. It, and it's, it yeah, it ended up uh, working out. 
All right. Any uh, other? I'm, yeah. I'm out. I'm okay, out I've of got mine. A few. Yeah. Um, another bad habit I had was, you know, the phrase trust but verify? Yeah. As a young founder, I did distrust but verify. <laughs> and I didn't know that I was doing this, but I thought the hallmark of a great CEO is being super detail oriented, looking pedantically into what everyone's doing, show where they might be missing you know, a piece of the puzzle. And that is actually such a terrible habit for the team growing around you yep. and, and loving their work because no one wants to be audited daily, weekly, monthly, but certainly not from this uh, kind of just, I've worked at places where they call the CEO Eye of Sauron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you don't, want, you don't want to be working on the project where the Eye of Sauron is watching over. And that's what it can feel like if you have this, this, and I think I was tr so stupidly, immaturely thinking, oh, this will impress people if I find nitpick and find these little details that right. are wrong. And that bad habit was destroying a healthy fabric of, of the team around me, um, you know, coming into their roles and coming into their days each, you know, every day feeling like, all right, this is an awesome t team yeah, to be around. Nobody it's wants like, to work with somebody who they feel like doesn't trust them. Right. And I had no idea that it had that, that feeling. But when I look back, I'm like, it was absolutely, um, it was hurting the trust and the fostering of a great team by feeling like I need to have a magnifying glass on everything. Okay. Last one, um, six to seven cups of coffee. <laughs> no joke. And we've chatted about this. I don't even this. understand that, like how your heart still functions. Dude, it's, I know. And we've chatted about this. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's legit. Six to seven cups of coffee a day. Uh, and that Red Bull's, you know, mixed in. It was so ridiculous. And it's, I think it's a function of, for, for me, I thought, okay, I'm like one coffee away from my inbox, zero. I'm one coffee away from getting through this meeting. And... And the truth is all these other bad habits that we had, and this is where I think this, this topic is so powerful is it's, there's a quote that it's, you know, men often die of their, uh, of the misguided remedies than of their illnesses. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who said it, but I remember reading that in a Jim Collins book. And, and I was like, I look back at these bad habits that then you mask with other bad habits. Right. You didn't sleep, so you need seven cups you need of coffee. Seven <laughs> cups of coffee. And it's just like you're, you put you, I would put myself in, metaphorical quicksand and the easiest thing is like just don't walk into the quicksand yeah and then you don't need to spend all of this energy to climb out and instead have solid foundations um obviously ended up starting magic mind with you because of everyone should have a solid foundation to their morning but i look back at the six or seven cups of coffee every day and think that not only was a terrible habit but it was because of this quicksand of other bad habits that no. i was trying to mask yeah you're like have these cascading sets of of things to fix other things right i was like not emotionally able to sit with the discomfort of like anxiety around being a founder so i drank so then i needed to like and my sleep was so my sleep was fucked up so then i needed like a ton of coffee in the morning right like and it, this all of these things you know kind of interacted with each other so the key is meditation and get right with yourself <laughs> yeah, to no, totally. Yeah. And then in that, um, like I used to push off any discomfort yeah. whatsoever. So, yeah, I mean like this, yeah. So for, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're always facing discomfort, right? You have like things aren't going well, like you have anxiety about the future of your company. All your net worth is wrapped up in this like company your and your ego, your Shit, identity. Terrible, I, terrible yeah. bad habit. And so if anything, you know, if I always had feelings or often had feelings of discomfort of like, oh, I have anxiety of what's going to happen or I feel guilty that I raised all this money and it's not going well. And so I would try to suppress those because I was not able to sit with them. And the suppression was usually like watching tons of TV or drinking heavily. And eventually, you know, through meditation, I learned to sit with my uncomfortable experiences. Oh, I feel bad. Like I, I, I feel guilty. Well, let me just be with that, be present with that. And then maybe I don't need things to change at this moment. I can just be with it. And because I don't need things to change, I don't need to like these, you know, kind of cascading mitigations, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, like that's made me such a much healthier and more effective individual. Yeah, it's interesting. The, 
I think that that ability to sit with that discomfort, it's it's fascinating that you talk about that because it is so many of the bad habits. If you really peel back the onion and go back to this, like, how do I get, and the whole world tells you, get rid of discomfort, get yeah. rid of discomfort. And yet, and you feel like maybe you start the entrepreneurial journey. I know I did thinking, okay, this is going to solve discomfort, mm-hmm. yeah. wealth or, you know, uh, professional calling. It's going to solve and get rid of discomfort. And, and it's going to be basically, I'm going to get comfort. Yeah. Oodles and oodles of comfort out yeah. of this instead of like, no, it's not about the comfort you you get. It's the amount of almost lives are made on the discomfort you are able to sit with. Yeah. And in my 20s, I just, yeah, I was trying to wipe everything clean of any discomfort. And I think it's a brilliant point of every day almost taking stock of how much discomfort can I handle. Yeah. And now I now I try to find ways to increase my discomfort. What are some you of know, those things you like do? Like extended fasts, fast for five days, or exercise is one I never liked exercise. And, you know, try to exercise regularly. Or even meditation. I don't really like to meditate that much. But it's like, well, that's a story, actually. But I, you know, it's something that I've not, it's not, not naturally drawn to, but just to be able to practice sitting there and being bored, you know. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a great practice for me. It's really helped me develop. Yeah, the fasting has been helpful. Do the fasting until noon each day. Mm-hmm. It is this repetition. Every day you have uh, this this very safe game yeah. that you're playing with yourself that doesn't have you know like existential professional consequences to it. But it's this this safe game that you're playing with yourself of like, okay, yeah, this is uncomfortable. It's going to be great yeah. in a little bit. This is uncomfortable. It's going to be great in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like meditation as well as ice baths. Yes. Um, ice bath is a good one. Like an ice plunge. Yeah, cold where, plunge. Yeah, you think it's the, who would ever do this? This is insane. Then you feel great on the other side of it. And it is that same repetition of, okay, greatness can be all right on the other side of something that sounds laughably uncomfortable. Yeah. Awesome. Boom. That was the video. Write down your bad habits in the comments. Tell us what you're working on. Not only will we try to help with those bad habits, we'll jump in the comments and try to reply of of how we might have worked through one or two of them. But also we're going to find uh, a lucky winner that writes down a bad habit that you're working on. And we're going to hook you up with a 30 pack, a month supply of Magic Mind. So uh, so yeah, feel free to write down whatever whatever dark bad habit you know you need to overcome that you're working on right now and we'll choose the most honest vulnerable one awesome all right see you guys next time